Hi, welcome to my channel. Um, today I wanted to share a video about all of my favorite children's books that I read th this last year. So these are these would be great for you know just read aloud with your with your kids for just family time or um, good also for free reads or extra reads for you know home education. So yeah, I just wanted to share some of our favorites. Okay. <sighs> First of all, I could not do a video like this without showing you The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Um, we actually read through this entire book. We, we just finished it yesterday, so we didn't quite finish it in uh, 2021, but we loved this, uh, the whole series. My six-year-old, he was five and then turning six throughout the year. He loved it. This was our favorite to me. I read these when I was... Um, uh, probably second grade is when I remember reading them to myself. Um, no, no, second grade, third grade, sorry. When I was in third grade. I don't know if I read them before that. I know I watched the old like BBC movie in like the, from the 80s. Um, so I was familiar with the story at least. Um, but anyways, I think this is really the standard of children's literature. To me, um, C.S. Lewis has been so influential in my life and in, I don't know, how I view other literature as well. So this is just a series that is not to be missed. Um, this is a cool book in, in particular. This one has all seven um, in one hardcover with uh, the, the original illustrations by Pauline Baines and they're in color. So it's kind of fun. It's good for read aloud. Um, I have like a paperback set of the seven that are good for, uh, for, for kids to pick up and read themselves, but we're not to that stage yet. I don't have any uh, independent readers. Um, but yeah, this is just a fun book. Here's a, a random page from from it so it's got these small illustrations throughout the text and then like sometimes it has that's that happens to be the front cover of a book inside of it um but so, so sometimes it has full page pictures but it's just so beautiful and i think my uh son was um very disappointed that it was over but he was like his suggestion was maybe we can start reading them again <laughs> and i was like well we might wait a while and read some other books first but yes we will definitely read them again. This is, I don't know, probably my fifth time through this whole series. Um, something like that. I've read them several times over my life and they are beautiful and delightful and just, in my opinion, not to be missed. So just classic children's literature, the very best. So that was my first one that I wanted to share. All right. And then these are some books that I had not heard of before. So this is Tales of the Kingdom by David and Karen Maines. And then the second one is Tales of Res Blah, the Resistance by David and Karen Maines. Um, and then there's a third one, Tales of the Restoration. Um, but these were such great books and um, they were written in about the 80s, I think. Um, and they just came out with a brand new, like this is the older illustrations, which we enjoyed, but they just came out with like a 30th anniversary um, new illustrations. Uh, so th those are available uh, brand new, like off Amazon or off their website. Um, but these were great stories. Um, we got a really sweet spot um, earlier in the year where, you know, my three-year-old, he's a lot more wiggly. And, but there was, there was a, a time in the summer where we were reading them and he was listening and really engaging in them more than he does with some other books. So I was loving that both of my kids could enjoy them. Um, and me and my husband really loved them as well. Um, so they have, they have 12 chapters each they have about one picture per chapter, I think. Maybe one, maybe two pictures, maybe a smaller picture. But it is just really cool. Okay, let me read you just this little bit. Oh my goodness, okay. This is, this is just a little excerpt from the very beginning. Once upon a time, not long ago and not far away, there was a boy, no longer a child and not yet a man who lived in the enchanted city. The boy, Scarboy, and his younger brother, Little Child, were not like the other children in the city. Yesterday, their mother had died, and they had immediately been taken into custody by the Enchanter's men. Rumors said that the Enchanter kept orphans to stoke the huge fires that burned deep in the hold of Dagoda, the temple where the Enchanter lived and ruled. A burner, one of the secret police who carried out the Enchanter's bidding, had brought the boys to the burning place, a vast square of ashes. There, they would watch the funeral ceremonies for their mother, whose body rested on, on an ornate bier in the middle of the field. The thought of his mother choked the older boy. She had been so beautiful, as beautiful as the daughter of a king. 
There is a king, his mother had always insisted, a real king. She believed the ancient tales, even though signs were posted all over Enchanted City. There is no such thing as a king, death to pretenders. But his mother had become ill, as so many did in the foul air of Enchanted City. In the last days before she died, she slipped in and out of the fever, often telling Scarboy the ancient tales from her childhood. Once a great king ruled our city, she had said. All the people thought him beautiful and served him willingly. But the enchanter came and deceived the people and put a spell on the city. The king was exiled. Those who would find him must hunt for him in the place where trees grow. So that is the beginning of the story. We found it just enchanting and we loved it. So I would definitely highly recommend these. Both of them were, yeah, definitely five-star reads. Okay, next I have a couple of George McDonald's, who is also really an author that I discovered this year. He was very influential to C.S. Lewis, and that's how I kind of got interested. Um, so this is one of the great classics, The Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald. This one is illustrated by Jesse Wilcox Smith, so it has some really pretty illustrations. Um, but this was so good. Um, so it talks about uh, the princess, Irene, and Curdy, who's a shepherd boy, and uh, there's goblins, and so there's action, and my son loved this one. So he would like to wear his cloak of sky blue, like the, the princess had this cloak of sky blue. And then in this picture, you can just barely see it. She's holding on to this string. So this has just a very, um, it's almost like she has a fairy godmother. Uh, it's her grandmother, but not everyone can see her. So she's interacting with her grandmother and her grandmother gives her this special string. If she takes her ring off her finger and puts it under her pillow, she can follow the string and it'll take her and she'll be safe. And, it, and she's kind of in the grandmother's uh, care or under her protection. And um, it's just a really great story. Um, very adventurous, but very uh, whimsical or dreamy too. So I loved it. Um, definitely worth reading if you're an adult too and you don't have kids. Like it's just really good. Uh, let me see if I can, okay, here's a great picture. Oh my goodness. I just so enjoy illustrated classics like this. It's just gorgeous. Okay, and then here is um, another book we read by George MacDonald. This is a short story called The Golden Key. This one is illustrated by Ruth Sanderson, and we, like, my my son so wants to buy this book, but it's not even available anymore, so we, we've checked it out from the library two or three times. Um, we're reading it again now, but it just has... It's just these uh, black and white illustrations, and she went with that because it talks about, it describes in the book all these colors that you can't usually see. So she wanted people to be able to just imagine that. And, um, and you can't, I mean, you can't draw colors that nobody can see. So just really interesting pictures. This is just a short story. So it's really, it's, it doesn't take that long to read. Um, but it, I, I guess, I mean, it, they put in little chapters. It didn't naturally come with those chapter breaks. It's longer than a regular picture book, but it's very nice. Just a, just once again, a very enchanting and uh, I don't know if whimsical is the right word, but very dreamy, ethereal. Um, there's just, you can tell that you're, there's more to it than just the surface level. There, there's more to it. And kind of the, um, the phrase that got stuck in my mind after reading this book was uh, the place from whence the shadows fall. So there's some kind of kingdom that was up above that was casting shadows in this area. And it was just very poetic and beautiful. So highly recommend. Yeah, my son loved it. Okay, the next book I have for you is another author that I discovered this year that I had never heard of before. This is uh, Kate Charity, and this one's called A Tree for Peter. She has some books that are a little bit older age, but this one was perfect for where we are. Um, this one has some pictures in it, and... Um, so it's a chapter book, it has a few chapters, but it has, yeah, I say some pictures, it has a picture just about on every single page. So it's always like on the left side is the words and on the right side is the, are the pictures. Um, this was a beautiful story. Um, yeah, there's this little boy and his mother who live in Shantytown and the mother is at work every day except for Sundays. And, um, and she's just work early in the morning to late at night. And the boy is, 
uh, probably too young for school. Um, I, I, yeah, I would think they still have school um, back when this was set, but it just, um, so he's just alone in Shantytown um, and there's just kind of like a dump outside and sometimes he can't really get warm enough and he doesn't really have much to eat. And he's just there by himself and he is younger. There's some older boys and they, he kind of avoids them because they're mean to him. And he's just, you know, he's just little and they're the bigger boys. Um, but this just has some great, it's really great for the idea of the seed of imagination, the seed of something that grows into something bigger as an adult. So this idea that can be planted as a child and then blossom as an adult, something you can work your whole life towards, I guess. And then it also, um, I think this would be really great for uh, like a particularly good story for blind people. And um, actually the people I found out about it from were from a delectable education and uh, Liz is blind. She didn't say anything particularly about this, but I was thinking this one, it had some very, it almost described days or certain parts of days in color ways. Um, I'm thinking particularly gold and green and blue. Those were the colors that I think I remember. Um, and it wasn't, what you would expect. It's not like trying to describe what a color looks like, but they were feelings and it was probably very ethereal, but it was very beautiful. And I think that would be a cool thing for a blind person to have this, this dreamy sense of what a color might feel like. Um, and it was just, it was just really neat. Um, I think there's a, uh, there's a man that befriends the boy. And to me, it seems kind of like one of those things where you're entertaining angels unawares or kind of like a Christ-like figure, almost like he's not permanently there in the book. So he, he sees him a couple days and he does something kind for the boy, but he's not permanently a, a fixture and he, he doesn't know how to, you know, go and just find him. He doesn't have a house or an address. I mean, it's a shanty town, so he's portrayed as sort of a wandering hobo in a way. Um, but I thought that was really neat and really beautiful. It's told through the eyes of this little boy, and uh, I just highly recommend it. Five-star book. Okay, the next series was... I was excited to find this modern series because I, uh, I think everything else is more classic literature and um, I don't know I just don't always find more modern things that I like but this is the Miss Mantle Chronicles so here was book one Urchin of the Riding Stars we like audiobooked that when we had a drive earlier or like in the summertime and then this one is the second one uh, Urchin and the Heartstone we read both of those and then we got this one for Christmas so we have not read this one yet this is The Heir of Mist Mantle but these were just really cool stories I really love that picture <laughs> Um, of, yes, it has the, the squirrels. They live on this island called Mist Mantle, and there are, I think there's like four main categories of animals that are like the talking animals of the island. It's like hedgehogs, squirrels, um, oh goodness, I'm gonna blank, otter, and uh, one other one, and there's also sometimes swans, but there's far fewer swans, and they have, you know, they have a castle and a, a king and queen, and just, the the whole story it's there's a lot of valor and um bravery and there's you know treachery and uh it's kind of there's a mystery it's yeah the whole book starts with the prince the the first heir hedgehog that's the other one because i think the king is a hedgehog so the son the prince is murdered and they're all like how could this happen on miss mantle this is a thing that could never happen so they're all in shock and disbelief and they're all you know so sad and furious and so it's pinned on somebody and he gets uh banished from the island and they it's called the island is called mist mantle because there's special mists that are all around the island and it, it kind of protects the island it also they have some kind of um poetry or something that says that once people people who belong to mist mantle once they leave they can't come back um so but sometimes traitors are allowed to come not traitor traitors people who are or other animals from other islands who are coming to trade things um, who don't belong there, that they're allowed sometimes, but sometimes the mists are hard to get through. So it's just a really 
interesting story. Uh, the main character is Urchin and he is, um, so maybe it's sort of got a, a young adult or coming of age type thing. So he's like a young squirrel um, and he becomes a, I think page is the right word. He becomes a page in the castle to uh, one of the, mm, I don't know, there's like three or four lead people underneath the king. And um, because the, uh, yeah, okay. So if the heir is lost, which the heir was killed, then one of those top people, I can't remember what they're called, squires or something, or lords, um, then they will become the next heir. And so, but previous to this, this hedgehog king, you know, his line had been unbroken for quite a while. That was usually supposed to be, if there wasn't an heir, not because of murder, which was a very, yeah, they were all shocked, but then it's just very interesting too, how they were all shocked, but then it seemed like there were a lot of people who were actually treacherous. And um, maybe that speaks to um, normalcy bias when people just expect that things are normal and good and that they'll continue being that way. And they can't imagine that somebody would be <laughs> doing bad things or thinking there was a better way, but what their better way is, is bad for other people. So that's very interesting, but I would highly recommend these. I think they could be good for a range of ages. I think high schoolers, adults would enjoy them. And I think all the way down to very early elementary school. So that was another, those were all, yeah, five star books. Except for, yeah, I haven't read that one yet, but okay. All right, and the last ones I have are a few Lamplighter books. We read several Lamplighter books and I, um, yeah, we enjoyed several of them. These were some standouts. This is one that I really loved, Sir Malcolm and the Min Missing Prince. Um, I just thought this was a really good story. It has a prince who is at the very beginning, he's at court with his father and uh, the, the queen has passed away before the story begins. And he is, his father asks him to make a judgment of a case that's come before the court. Like they're, they're letting the people come in and present their, uh, whatever has happened to them that they would like justice for. And so in this case, the accused person is one of the, the courtiers who's a friend of the prince, and he just totally ignores all the evidence and rules in favor of his friend. And, you know, that's that. And he's, you know, he doesn't even want to be in court and he just is annoyed with the whole process and he just wants his friend to be happy. And then, um, and then he, so he leaves the court and then his, the king overrules his unjust judgment. And he finds out about that later and he's mad about that anyways. The king is so heartbroken that his son is like this, is kind of wild and unjust. And he's like, how can I leave my kingdom to him when he's would give such an unjust judgment that anybody could see that he did it wrong? So Sir Malcolm comes up with an idea. He's like, okay, you know, give him into my care and I will help him grow in character. And so the king lets him do whatever he wants with him. And it's kind of announced that he's going to school in a foreign country and they go and they look like they're boarding this ship and there's a send off of the ship, but really secretly they switch out and, you know, put somebody else on the ship to look like the prince. And Sir Malcolm just takes him way into the back country of the kingdom, far away where you wouldn't, he wouldn't, uh, the prince would not be able to walk back or know where he was exactly. And he leaves him in the care of an old woman in this town. And um, they're very poor and they just, you know, they have to work. Everybody has to work. And, um, and so Prince, Hubert or, you know, nobody really believes he's a prince and he doesn't really talk about that anymore once people laugh at him about it. Um, so he starts finding ways to help and to work and he just lives in this town for really two or three years. And then there is injustice that is done to the town. There's kind of a duke that's in charge of the area and he sets some laws that are basically so difficult that the people are destitute and they're really, they're just gonna die in the winter because they don't, the, the prices are too high for wood. Previously, they'd been allowed to harvest some of the king's wood that they needed for, you know, the king's forests for their, for their fires and now they can't and they, um, he's raised the price so high and at first they compensated for that by they would um, just go to each other's hearths and, and stay together and then the Duke didn't like that or the Duke's, I think the Duke was good or unaware of his, um, his stand-in, like he went on vacation sort of and went touring the countries and his uh, replacement in the meantime was in, in implementing all these harsh things. And uh, 
And so he didn't like that they were saving or, or not giving him as much money as he wanted because they were going to each other's hearts. And then he raised the price again and then they couldn't afford the wood at all. So they were just going to freeze to death. They didn't have uh, enough money. And so it really riled up my sense of justice. And, um, and so then they go to make appeal to the king and it's just a really good book. I really loved it. Uh, at the very end, I feel like they didn't punish like they didn't ask for punishment for the guy who had done so much wrong to them. So I thought that was weird, but they just wanted things to be, to be made right. So I guess that's fine. So that one was really good. This one was one that um, my son said was his favorite because I was trying to ask him. And uh, he's funny because sometimes when I ask him books that he likes, it's like when we were reading them, he really likes them. And then later he's like into something else. So he'll be like, oh no. And he kind of acts like he doesn't like them. I'm like, all right. He's like, I know you like that one. <laughs> Um, but in this case, this was one that he picked as his favorite. So this is Little Sir Galahad. This is a story of, there's a lame boy who, I think he had some kind of sickness. And so he's not able to run and get strong and help people as much as he wanted. But he has such a good heart. And then another friend that he makes and they kind of form this little, um, I think his friend is Arthur. And so he goes by like Sir Arthur or something. And so they have sort of their little um knighthood uh imaginings and they just they want to do good and his friend starts telling him about his king and it's jesus and um it's just a really neat story of how you know some family is brought back together and and how this boy is is changed and he's uh becomes more content or appreciative even in his circumstances where he has not been able to get strong or to be able to run as much as he was 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 before he was sick. And I do think he starts recovering some, but maybe he's never as strong as he had been, but that was a really good one. This one is Ransacked in Russia by Mary Ropes. And this one says, a story of two brave boys. And this one, um, I was actually surprised. This one has not just that book, but it has two other, um, they're all not such long stories, but the two other ones are shorter than this one. This one is a story of two brothers who, um, are it's like their father is the manager of a warehouse in russia or like a factory and then it's kind of like the factory people mutiny and they're they're just disgruntled and they come and like ransack the house and kidnap the boys and the boys are uh yeah they do they have a just an adventure in trying to escape the kidnappers and make sure that their family is safe too and um, it's a really good story. And then there was another story, uh, the one in the back, it was called Annie King's Question. And I thought it was really good. And it had, I think, an example of a Charlotte Mason style teacher, because there's like the Sunday school teacher, which Sunday school back then was kind of different than how it is today. It was um, the the poor children didn't have any school. And so members of the church as a ministry of the church would offer school on Sundays and they would come and they would learn about Bible, but they would learn how to read and how to write. And so it was really a loving and caring and a service to the community. Um, but yes, in this case, her teacher posed a, a question that was this, you know, an idea to ponder, which was, I thought was cool. It says one reason why Annie liked them so much, her teacher's lessons, was that they never concluded without leaving to each one who heard them something that they might distinctly carry away in their minds. And on this Sunday afternoon, the whole class met after school to talk over the question Miss Ellis had left them to, to decide. So I really enjoyed that. I liked that. Um, yeah, good books. This one was one that was kind of part of a set of three so it was sort of a random assortment that I was getting and I just didn't necessarily expect that this one would be as good as I uh you know it kind of surprised me and stood out so I really liked that so yep here is our favorite children's books of 2021 and uh I hope you enjoy I hope you are encouraged to read some of these um I know the mismantle books they um they were printed several years ago. So I, I was able to get these on thrift books, but they do have them on Purple House Press. They're re-releasing them if you're not able to find them um, used. So they, they're re-releasing them. They have two at least out right now. But yeah, those are really good. So, all right. <laughs> Bye.